I just give a thumbs up instead of that. Hey YouTube. Yeah, so everything's changing, so Les Paul's again. So this is what I was doing a bit video of the other day. Uh, put a push pull pot in it. Uh, so kind of comparing this to the one that I've not played enough, which should be my one. Um, so this is a 2021 tribute Les Paul. That's a 2013 50s tribute Les Paul. Um, that one's been sanded down. That that and the obviously it's got P nineties in it, but the P nineties is the big difference. So kind of it's like what the difference between P nineties and humbuckers in a similar guitar. Okay, I think there's arguments to be had that newer ones are slightly better built and all that. We'll talk about that. I was just going to quickly run through. So humbuckers bridge. <laughs> Position. Nineties. So I mean they focus. They do sound different. There you go. So glad you watched the video. No, uh, I so I, I always think that um well they're kinda somewhere between like a strap pickup, or a, they are a single coil pickup basically. So I think they're better, pretty much more usable for clean, um, especially the bridge. You get much more chance of sort of strumming it and playing it clean with a P90 than you do with a humbucker. That does not apply when you put distortion on, but for clean. So I suppose the well, humbucker wasn't really designed for a different sound. It was designed to stop buzzing. So it, you know, it, it, it's a different sound. It's a more popular sound now, anyway. But at the time, you know, in the fifties, it was like um, it was a necessity so that people could play louder without there just being hundreds of feedback and stuff um, and interference from bad electrical circuits, which we don't get to the same degree these days. So the sixty cycle hum thing, well, we don't get it in Britain because we're not. Uh, 60 hertz uh, we're 50 so we've got 50 cycle hum which you never really hear about um, but I think it's, a lot of that comes from back in the 60s and 70s when things were doing it was quite feasible that you would have you'd be playing a venue that had like 30, 40, 50 year old electrics in it so dodgy lights and you know botched up cables I mean, in America the, you know, the, the electric cables run off the streets lights so I think so. Just, there's just masses of cables running everywhere. It looks pure random. Um, at least here they're underground. Uh, yes, yeah, so I suppose compared to two guitars, um, it's hard to tell because this one's been sanded. Um, this one wasn't a particularly nice colour. It wasn't me that sanded it, but I saw it before. It was a sort of glossy, badly put on black effect. But, didn't look as nice as that one. Um, but I think pretty much this is a very similar build. I think, I keep I keep saying this is a, a, 
a maple neck and I just maybe, maybe it is it just doesn't look like maple I'm sorry it does that does not look like maple you can really see you can't I can't get close enough but I mean it looks the same as it looks like it's you can even see the line that looks like it runs through there which obviously doesn't because it's a set in neck not a neck through but It's, it's not. It's not. It's not maple. <laughs> See if you look at that bit there, right? Not very well. There, I mean, the, the, the grain on this bit being the mahogany body and the grain on this bit and the neck are right next to each other sanded. And they both look the same. Um. I mean, it, this one, this one definitely says maple and thing, but it doesn't. Again, it doesn't look. I am not a wood expert. Maybe you get different types of maple, um, but it doesn't look it. All right. Uh, I was saying that the neck on that one was much thicker than in this one. I don't think that's really the case, to be honest. I think it's just because it's. Um, No, it's not, not, not hugely different, no. no what I noticed in this one, I, was, I wasn't really that impressed with that um, Gibson Explorer I had. I think it was a really expensive guitar. They're not super good at sanding the edge of the, the fingerboard. Maybe that's why there's binding on the higher end ones. It just looks a bit kind of... You can uh, you sand it a bit more before you paint it kind of thing. Um, this one doesn't have that because it's been sanded. So this is perfectly smooth. It's, oh, there's no finish on the edges because it's all been sanded off. But that, that, you know, that, get it that smooth. Whereas that one and the Explorer, both a bit kind of, kind of sinking in. I'm not one for worrying about the, you know, finished flaws. It's just that when you're playing the guitar, the one bit you see is there. That's the bit you look at. You know, between the first and the third fret, on the edge of the fingerboard, just the way the light catches it. It's kind of oh, very smooth. Um. So not not Gibson not so good for that. that doesn't make any difference to how it plays at all. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of trying to force myself to play this. This has got um, Grover tuners that has Clausen Deluxe style tuners, which are more vintage correct. I'm not really noticing it make, make, making much difference to the balance of the guitar. Um, maybe I think I've got this one slightly lower down than that. I never know. Pretty much, I it's probably exactly the same hardware, or the same bridge and tailpiece, probably, don't know. Yeah, so if I put distortion on though, you'll see the humbucker kicking in. Not that, because I, I like the sound of, um, it depends what kind of music you're playing, but I like the sound of the P90s. But it's maybe a little bit clangy, you can hear the noise come through. Middle. Neck. We're going to alter the angle of this switch. It's kind of going that way instead of up and down like the uh, that one is. So I'll, I'll, I'll be taking that off and just, just rotating it around a few degrees. Just because I'm used to that right now. Neck. But probably not so good for the sort of more metally sort of. Reggie Black Sabbath was P90s, so they are heavy metal. So on the neck. See, there you're really hearing the difference there. Maybe not quite so much when you're in the the single note stuff up at the 12, you know, the where you play when you're using the neck pickup. 
Mm. It's still got the ooh, ooh, but it's still doing that, but it's a, a totally different flavour. Ooh, he said flavour. But it does sound different with, your, with the chords. The chords are much more... Noty. Yeah, the neck is thicker on this one. Not more here. It seems to stay thicker here. That one seems to get thinner. I don't know whether it's actually a different neck carve or it's just they uh, are, you know, different owners from the company. Some are not buying. They're not sold over in two thousand and eighteen or something like that. With the the new range come in. Um, that is new owners. So change some specs. I don't know. This one's maybe more accurate to a fifties. I don't know. This isn't technically a. This is just a tribute, not a fifties tribute. Whereas that's a 50s tribute, so maybe that's got like a 50s neck and this has a 60s neck. I don't know. I don't even think there was, um, I don't think they changed in like the 50s and the 60s are different. I think it's like in 55 or something, it was different from 56, you know, at some point, or it was just different types. But it's good. Yeah, it's very different uh, from the P90 when you're on the bridge pickup. I wouldn't have said there was as much difference when you're in the middle. It's got a slight feeling of chord, being able to play chordy, jangliness. It's also got the the pure fire hose of lead guitar in it, isn't it? It's amazing how much easier I'm finding it playing Les Paul once I've worked out the stance, which is fully standing on my right leg, having it off to the side and then kind of having it here, it's kind of making more sense to me. Um, but I'm not used to it yet because I was playing the other day, I don't know, I was complaining about how I just couldn't play guitar. I think it was from putting other normal guitars in this position rather than being where they should be, which is there, where you can't play a Les Paul, which is why I've never been able to play a Les Paul. So you have to do it there. Um, and then when you do that with like a Strat or something, you can still play it, but something's off. I like. I, I think I, I want the neck to be there, regardless of where the guitar is. I suppose just get used to it. I'm actually wondering about just oil in that um that guitar. That is much like I quite actually I'm actually quite liking the look of that. I mean that's just some sort of varnish. I mean that's where you look at it and it's like pure oh it's maple look from a distance, yeah totally. Oh it's not brown, but mahogany's not that colour anyway, because you know, when you don't this is this is stained that colour. You know, the colour it actually is is that, which is okay. Slightly redder, is it? If you get the angle right. Just to be, to me, the neck, or th this this bit of the body, th th this bit of mahogany looks like the neck. This doesn't as much, but I mean, that's what I mean. It's like this. I mean, there's it three bits. I don't think it's just two. You know, it's like this bit and this bit. Th this looks more like this than it looks like this, and these are both mahogany, so. But again, when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm going to be doing some some tonewood stuff this week. 
uh, that won't be tongue in cheek at all. Um, and whether it would make any difference to a guitar. And I do get if you've got two Les Pauls made and one of them had a maple neck, the, the two guitars are going to be different, but is that purely because of the maple neck? I don't know. Um, I don't know how consistent you would make these things. Um, it was maybe a, arguably a maple fret board would maybe make more difference because basically I'm going for the difference between maple and rosewood as a fretboard thing is rosewood isn't varnished maple is I think that probably makes more difference than whether it's mo whether it's rosewood or maple because maple just gets dirty and rosewood because it's because it's dark it doesn't <laughs> it's how that works I think yeah, no, but I like this guitar, so I'm going to be doing a, a demo. I want to, I want to get a bit more playing in that. I'm going to do the shootout, which is better. The Aria or the Les Paul. That's my two P90 guitars. Um, and I was, I, I kind of dug out the Aria yesterday, and I was playing it. The, the Thor sound, and I ended up playing it for like an hour or something. Like that, and pure loving it, and it's like that wasn't really what I intended to do. I've tried to do that with this one, and I've not, I've not got lost. For an hour and a half playing like I did with that one so I don't know what's going on there um I want I want I want it to be a, a closer match I don't know from my first Les Paul yeah it's a shame that that but to be honest it's, it's the only bit that's it's, it's quite ripply up, up the edge of the fingerboard um but that's, that's just Gibson. It's the same. That, that, that probably makes it a real Gibson. Same as that Explorer I was playing. And that was like a two grand guitar or something. Balance wise, I would have said it was the same. I wonder if this one's a, a weight relief one. I've never actually. I didn't actually weigh it. I could be able to tell you that. Um, I mean, I, I know I know. there's, there's a few. Oh, but for sustain, you want weight. I don't know about that, um, but Les Pauls are often incredibly heavy. 3.7 kilos. I think that one there is pretty much exactly that. And I know that one, this one's weight relieved. It actually feels heavier. It's maybe a wee bit more. It doesn't have the paint on it, so it's like Grover's they weigh more. 3.9. So, I mean, it just goes to show, I mean, I'm classing anything over, a guitar starts to get heavy about 3.9, about 4, so it's just on the verge of being heavy. The corker is 4. Oh, no, I think I, I think I did the corker. What I did was if I took the lead out and took off the strap, I got it down to 4 kilograms. As a, as a, 4 is quite heavy for a guitar. 3.5, 3.6, somewhere in there is... Averagey, where you don't notice it, it is neither heavy nor light. Once you get down very close to three, it starts becoming very light. And once it's below three, it's like ah, you don't let go of it in case it floats away. Um, so I mean, I I would totally have the chambered one rather than a solid one if it saved like a kilogram because that's what we're talking about. I mean, I think Les Pauls can be four and a half kilograms. You know, it's like over the edge to being like pure. Oh, which is, you know, it's fine for getting a shot of it. You think, oh, this is heavy. But even when I'm you know, sitting doing a video for 20 minutes or standing doing a video for 20 minutes, you know, heavy's heavy. But if you're doing like a, a maybe not so much like a 20 minute gig or a half hour gig, but a three hour studio session where you're standing there with this thing on for three hours, I bet you would probably rather have a bit less weight in it. Rock on. See you later.